Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque. Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsot. Pray for us. Please all stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. Let my steps be guided by your promise. May evil never rule me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins so that we may be less unworthy to partake of this Eucharist. Let us be sorry for our sins and beg the forgiveness by which we are renewed and saved. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that schooled through Lent and observance and nourished by your word through holy restraint we may be devoted to you with all our heart and be ever united in prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. A reading from the book of the Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people and said, Now, Israel, hear the statutes and decrees which I am teaching you to observe. 
that you may live and may enter in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. Therefore, I teach you the statutes and decrees as the Lord my God has commanded me, that you may observe them in the land you are entering to occupy. Observe them carefully, for thus will you give evidence of your wisdom and intelligence to the nations who will hear of all these statutes and say, This great nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. For what great nation is there that has God so close to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? Or what great nation has statutes and decrees that are as just as this whole law which I am setting before you today. However, take care and be earnestly on your guard, not to forget the things which your own eyes have seen, nor let them slip from your memory as long as you live, but teach them to your children and to your children's children. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He sends forth his command to the earth, swiftly runs his word. He spreads snow like wool, frosts his truth like ashes. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has not made known to them. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Please all stand. Salita mo, Christong mahal, Espiritu umubuhay, Nagtuturot umaka, Nagkanais makamtan Ang langit na walang hanggan The Lord be with you And with your spirit A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew Glory to you, O Lord Jesus said to his disciples do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, our readings today talk about the law and the proper response 
to the law? And what is the proper response to the law? The proper response to the law is obedience. In our first reading today, Moses spoke to the people and told them about the laws, the statutes, and the decrees of the Lord. And he invited the people to obey the laws of the Lord. And in our gospel, Jesus also talks about the law. And Jesus said, I did not come to abolish the law. I come to fulfill them. In fact, in Jesus, the law was brought to perfection. My dear brothers and sisters, we obey laws not simply out of fear, but out of love. Minsan sumusunod tayo sa batas dahil takot tayong maparusahan. Sumusunod tayo sa batas kasi may penalty kapag hindi sumunod sa batas. Pero sana mas maging malalim yung ating pagsunod sa batas. Hindi lamang tayo sumusunod sa batas dahil sa ating takot, sa ating pag-iwas na maparusahan. Sumunod tayo sa batas dahil sa pag-ibig. Moses tells the people of Israel, If you obey the commands of the Lord, if you follow the Lord, then it means that you have a God and that you respect and honor and love this God. Kapag sinusunod natin ang batas ng Panginoon, ipinapakita natin, kinikilala natin ang Diyos, iginagalang natin siya at minamahal natin siya. Because, my dear brothers and sisters, obedience is an expression of love. You obey not only out of fear. True obedience is rooted in love. Kaya nga yung mga magulang, kapag sinusunod sila ng kanilang mga anak, ramdam na ramdam nila ang pagbamahal ng kanilang mga anak. Pero kapag yung mga anak hindi sumusunod sa kanilang magulang, ano yung sinasabi ng mga magulang? Sasabihin nila, hindi ako mahal ng anak ko kasi hindi nakikinig sa akin. Hindi sumusunod sa akin. You see, my dear brothers and sisters, obedience is a sign of love. If you love, then you will obey. And so if we love God, then we will obey the laws and the commandments of God. But you know, my dear brothers and sisters, obedience to the law does not only mean our love for God. When we obey the laws, it also express our our love for one another because the law does not only order our relationship with god the law also orders our relationship with one another sa pagtupad natin sa batas hindi lamang pagpapakita ito ng pagmamahal sa diyos ang pagtupad sa batas ay pagpapakita rin ng ating pagmamahal sa isa't isa. I will obey the law because I am concerned with other people. I will obey the law because I want to take care of other people. I will obey the law because I will not I do not want to violate the rights 
and the freedom of other people. I will obey the law because I love others. Sa pagtupad natin sa batas, ipinapakita rin natin ang ating pagmamahal sa ating kapwa. Halimbawa, yung mga batas trapiko, why do we have laws? Traffic laws. It is in order that we may show all concern and love for one another in our streets. Kung kanda-kanda na lamang tayo, eh walang sistema magkakagulo, mag-uunahan, at baka may maaksidente at may masaktan pa. But if we all follow traffic laws, then we are assured that everyone will be safe. The moment someone violates the law, then he puts himself in danger and he puts other people in danger also. So my dear brothers and sisters, today we are being encouraged to be obedient to the law of God and to the laws of our land. St. Francis de Sales once said that God does not ask anything else from us but to simply obey. Simply obey. And that is the challenge for each one of us this season of Lent. Let us intensify our love for God and for one another, not only through fasting and abstinence, not only through sacrifices and penances. Let us intensify our love for God and for each other by obeying the law of God and by obeying the law so that we may take care of one another. My dear brothers and sisters, if you want to love God and if you want to show your love for others, simply obey. Please stand. Let us pray to God our Father, the giver of all good gifts, that we may always obey His laws with the free attitude of Christ. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Church may bring to people the light of Christ by the preaching of the Gospel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That legislators may enact good laws for the benefit of the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That government leaders may implement laws and bring freedom and justice to their constituents, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That all people may come to know God and follow His laws written in their hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick, the deprived, and the lonely may be given due care, attention, and respect. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who died in Christ may receive love and mercy in the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray in silence for our own petitions. Let us remember the people who requested our prayers and the intentions offered in this Mass. Father in heaven, give us the grace to abide by your commandments and to foster your law and word among all who are placed in our care. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. Accept, O Lord, we pray the prayers of your people along with these sacrificial offerings and defend those who celebrate your mysteries from every kind of danger through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise, we acclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings, and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he decided to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, he handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The Mystery of Faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, the sacrificial victim, who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, 
and granted by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of the one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who, he <clears throat> who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Brother Rick our Administrator. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption, and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us ask the Father to forgive our sins and to bring us to forgive those who sin against us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it as is in heaven. heaven. Give us because this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not, not worthy that you, that you should, should enter under, under my roof. roof. But, but only say the word, and, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. May the heavenly banquet at which we have been fed 
sanctify us, O Lord, and cleansing us from all errors, make us worthy of your promises from on high, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We wish to remind you of our weekly healing rosary for the world tonight at 9 o'clock through our Facebook page, The Manila Cathedral. Our rosary tonight will be hosted by the monks of the Abbey of Our Lady of Montserrat in Mendiola, Manila. And so, let us gather once again as a family and as God's family and together implore the intercession of our Blessed Virgin Mary by praying together the Holy Rosary. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Give to your people, O God, a resolve that is pleasing to you, for by conforming them to your teachings, you bestow on them every favor through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Yours and